Well, good day. I see you're quite interested in uh, forest and the lake and uh, also the animals grazing there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, did you know that there's a peatland quite nearby? A peatland? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> well, uh, actually, I'm a tour guide, and uh, if you want to, I could give you a tour. We could explore it together. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Torfmoore bilden sich auch auf ebenen Flächen oder in flachen Senken, wenn der Boden immer mit Wasser gesättigt ist. Torfmoore sind sehr vielseitig. Fenngebiete, Feuchtwiesen, Hochmoore, Moorwälder, Marschwälder und sonstige Torfmoortypen sind alle einzigartige Ökosysteme. In ihnen leben hochspezialisierte Tier- und Pflanzenarten. Seit tausenden von Jahren bilden sie faszinierende Mosaike und gehen dynamisch ineinander über. Was ist ein Peatland? Uh, basically, Peatlands are places where peat is formed. And how it's formed? Uh, for peatland to form, it usually takes a place with shallow level of water that remains still and constant. Uh, these places are usually located near rivers or lakes. Uh, in time, these wet places, uh, they become saturated with nutrients and uh, therefore the oxygen can no longer dissolve in water. Mm. Uh, therefore, normal decomposing processes uh, cannot occur anymore mm. and uh, the dead plant mass just accumulates, uh, forming layers upon layers. So we are standing on dead plants here? Uh, yeah, this is, this is called uh, fen. This is the stage where plants uh, still receive nutrients from uh, groundwaters. How many stages there is? Uh, uh, there are three stages yeah. in general. Yeah. This is the first one and uh, the plants that are most usually common here are uh, sedges, cotton grasses and reeds. In Kalkmooren enthält das Grundwasser viel Kalk und bietet verschiedenen Primel- und Orchideenarten einen idealen Lebensraum. Das zweite Stadium ist das der Feuchtwiesen, deren Feuchtigkeit hauptsächlich dem Regenwasser entstammt. Hier gedeihen verschiedene Sauergräser und Torfmoose. Die Zersetzung der Pflanzen führt zur Bildung erster Torfschichten. Sobald die Torfschicht nur noch durch Regenwasser gespeist wird, entsteht das dritte Stadium, das Hochmoor. Es zeichnet sich durch ein Mosaik aus Moortümpeln und von Torfmoos bedeckten Flächen sowie eine aufgewölbte Form aus, deren Mitte einige Meter über den Randbereichen liegt. Is this still a peatland? Uh, yeah. But it's dry. Yeah, There's I know. No it, water. It, it may look uh, dry on the surface, but actually it's quite wet, uh, as you can see. There's still some moisture underneath, and you can even see the peat forming. Can I? Yeah. That's peat. That's peat, yeah. That's, that's the same we, we saw earlier. Yeah, we can feel it's wet. Yeah, it uh, stays like this. Uh, more or less through whole season. Fens and other peatlands are uh, amazing, not just because of their species diversity, but also because they accumulate and store carbon. And how does it work? Through photosynthesis. Uh, plants uh, absorb carbon dioxide from air and uh, store it in uh, carbon compounds such as carbohydrates and starch. What's so important? Who cares about? Well, uh, I cannot explain to it to you as good as a good friend of mine. Uh, that's why I come here. I will show you a video of her. She will explain it to you. Peatlands have a, a high water table and very specific uh, conditions like acidic uh, waters and peat. And in this kind of uh, conditions, plants grow and photosynthesize and bind uh, carbon, uh, but 
uh, this uh, uh, photosynthesizing uh, biomass or those uh, plant tissues, uh, they don't uh, decompose uh, fully, but uh, accumulate and accumulate uh, as peat. And uh, so carbon is bind inside the peat from those uh, plant tissues. And uh, in these cases, uh, this peat layer grows and uh, this uh, carbon is uh, get inside this peatland as peat. But if there is uh, some like uh, human disturbances, peatlands can uh, turn from carbon sinks to carbon sources. So it's natural, peatlands absorb uh, carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. They help to reduce the greenhouse effect. We rely on our natural uh, carbon sinks like oceans, forests and peatlands to absorb our CO2 emissions. Mm -hmm. Wenn das Fenn oder Moor feucht ist, gibt es viele Mikroorganismen, die während ihres Lebenszyklus Methan bilden, das dann vom Moor freigesetzt wird. Methan ist ein weiteres Treibhausgas, das in der Atmosphäre allerdings nur ca. 10 Jahre lang vorhanden ist. CO2 bleibt sehr viel länger in der Atmosphäre. Auf lange Sicht sind Torfmoore also lediglich Kohlenstoffspeicher. Sie geben kleinere Mengen Methan frei und binden große Mengen CO2. Aber Torfmoore haben seit ihrer Entstehung in Tausenden von Jahren Treibhausgase gebunden und freigesetzt. Wenn man diese Tatsache berücksichtigt, sind die Auswirkungen der CO2-Bindung sehr viel größer als die der Methanemissionen. We have just arrived at the raised bog. Yeah. As you can see, it's quite diverse and actually old. In this case, this, this uh, raised bog is uh, 4,000 years old. There wow. are some even more older in the northern awesome. Europe, could be 9,000 or so. Yeah. And uh, yes, these are in many cases formed on, uh, on uh, peatlands I mentioned before, like uh, transitional mires or fence. How, how thick is that? Can you tell us a little bit? Oh, yes. You see, it's, it's actually quite thick, as you can see. It goes all the way in. Oh, wow. Okay, quite thick. Uh, yes, the, the layer is, uh, has grown so thick, actually, that uh, the upper plants, they no longer receive nutrients from groundwater. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the part where the new species uh, is. Sphagnum moss comes in. It uh, grows like on top of the old plants. It forms layer on layer, and yeah, this is how this bog grows. The central part of the bog it usually grows quicker because uh, there is much more water, and uh, yeah, this this way it forms uh, the dome shape that is characteristic for uh, many raised bogs, and uh, yeah, in time. This uh, dome becomes so large that it forms cracks and these cracks fill up with water, uh, creating lakes and estuaries where ah, watering birds use yeah. for yeah, resting. Okay. But uh, more uh, uh, peat also means uh, more uh, carbon stored. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. That's, that's the way it is. Aufgrund der dicken Schicht Torf sind Hochmoore besonders gute Kohlenstoffspeicher. The peatlands uh, are the biggest uh, carbon uh, sinks globally uh, in the world uh, in comparison with uh, forests and all other vegetation uh, types combined. And uh, peatlands uh, store more carbon, uh, twice as much as uh, carbon as uh, forests. So they're underestimated but uh, very important. What use do peatlands have for us? 
For example, they act as uh, natural flood barriers. Yeah. How? Oh. How? Huh. Let me show an experiment. So, right here. You see, this is sphagnum mosses that uh, grow in bogs. You can. You see, the thing is that uh, they can absorb uh, large amounts of water, and uh, by doing so, they can absorb, for example, waters when it's uh, excessively raining or uh, when the snows are melting in spring. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, yeah, they hold, they absorb this water and they hold it. Therefore, these high uh, water level fluctuations are prevented. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, prevents floods. And it can hold uh, a lot of water. This. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me show you. I suppose it will take some few seconds. Oh. No. <laughs> See, it's actually like a sponge. Oh, oh yeah. All <laughs> that water goes back in. Für viele Völker, die in der Nähe von natürlichen Torfmooren leben, gehören die dort gesammelten Beeren zur normalen Ernährung. Auch heute noch verdienen manche Menschen viel Geld damit, die Beeren zu pflücken und auf dem Markt zu verkaufen. Torfmoore ziehen auch Touristen an, die ihre Zeit in und in der Nähe der natürlichen Moorgebiete verbringen, um zu wandern, Vögel zu beobachten und sich zu vergnügen. Die industrielle Nutzung von Torfmooren kann jedoch tiefgreifende Auswirkungen auf die Moore haben. Quite an area. This whole place. Tom, can you tell me this ecosystem seems very useful and beautiful uh, how it is? Why And how did we start it, to dig them up? Im Baltikum hat sich die Torfmoornutzung ab dem 17. Jahrhundert verbreitet, als Torf verstärkt als Brennstoff abgebaut wurde. Der Torfabbau hat sich am Ende des 19. Jahrhunderts intensiviert und erreichte seinen Höhepunkt im 20. Jahrhundert. Die Verfahren wurden industrialisiert und brachten hohe Gewinne. Peat uh, extraction is important for uh, Baltic states. Extracted peat is the mainly exported to foreign countries like Germany, Belgium, uh, Netherlands and uh, other countries. Peat uh, substrates are used in growing media, in uh, gardening, agriculture. But how uh, is the peat extracted? If it's so wet, uh, doesn't the heavy machinery sink in it? Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's why drainage was introduced. Uh, as you can see here, this is a drainage ditch. Oh. It was made uh, to lower the water level and uh, drain the peatland. Oh, so they drain it? Yeah, and it's actually uh, the drainage and drainage ditches are... Uh, they have quite a great impact on the peatland, even if the peat is not extracted. Wenn Gräben ausgehoben und das Torfmoor entwässert wird, ist der Wasserstand die meiste Zeit des Jahres niedrig und in die tieferen Torfschichten kann Sauerstoff eindringen. Dann vermehren sich die torfoxidierenden Bakterien und beginnen, den Torf zu zersetzen. Der vorher gebundene Kohlenstoff verwandelt sich nach und nach in CO2 und wird vom Torfmoor freigesetzt. Dadurch verliert das Torfmoor langsam seine natürliche Pflanzen- und Tiervielfalt und wird von wenigen Busch- und Baumarten überwuchert. So, drain peatlands are very prone to fire because uh, water level in such places is very low due to effect of drainage systems and the uh, upper la layers are dry and uh, they catch fire very fast. And uh, when such places catch fire, so they burn for a very long time and in the fire goes into deep layers. So peatlands may burn for months uh, in uh, dry weather. Uh, and during fire, the huge amounts of uh, carbon dioxide is emitted to the atmosphere. Torffelder, die nach dem Abfräsen der Torfschichten aufgelassen werden, sind ein großes Problem. Das Torffräsen hat sich im 20. Jahrhundert als wichtigste Torfabbaumethode durchgesetzt. Ein Torfmoor wird großflächig entwässert und dann über viele Jahre hinweg abgefräst. Nach Beendigung des Abbaus wird es zu Ödland und bietet nur ganz wenigen Tier- und Pflanzenarten 
einen sehr kargen Lebensraum, der endlos lange braucht, um sich auch nur ansatzweise zu erholen. Vor dem Aufstauen oder Zuschütten der Gräben sind Vorbereitungen erforderlich, die viele Monate dauern. In all cases, uh, the main techniques that are applied is uh, blocking of ditches, which means that we can build uh, peat dams or sometimes these are dams of uh, plastic piling or mineral ground or uh, boards or there are different approaches used in, in Europe and also in some uh, other regions. Uh, and uh, uh, the second thing is what we can do is uh, filling the ditches, which means that there's no ditch anymore and no drainage anymore. Zuerst muss an verschiedenen Punkten des Torfmoors der Grundwasserspiegel überwacht werden, um seinen Stand in den verschiedenen Jahreszeiten zu ermitteln. Dann erfolgt die sorgfältige Modellierung der möglichen Szenarien. Die Standorte der Dämme, die aufzufüllenden Gräben, die zu verwendeten Dämmtypen werden ermittelt und so weiter. In many cases, uh we can restore the hydrology, but the species are not coming back. This problem is well pronounced in uh, fragmented uh, landscapes, uh, especially in, in West Europe. Uh, but in cases when the, the mire uh, vegetation, the peat forming vegetation is not re-establishing or the process is too slow, uh, the plants are, can be reintroduced by planting or by sowing seeds or by, by spreading sphagnum fragments, which are uh, methods that are uh, becoming increasingly popular. In fact, uh, some of uh, agricultural lands are actually in places where there used to be peatlands before. Now I understand. The peat that is here is also the same that we've seen in, in the bog and it's also similar to what my granny was using in her flower bed. Yes, yes, it's a, it actually it is. Vor allem in Mitteleuropa, zum Beispiel in Polen und Deutschland, wurden Torfmoore oft trockengelegt, um die Flächen landwirtschaftlich nutzen zu können. Diese Fans waren der wichtigste Torfmoortyp und die meisten wurden in intensiv genutztes Ackerland umgewandelt. If we look to the history, um, uh, there, there was um, the, 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 the foremost need uh, in former times, like a century back, uh, was to fight the hunger. So uh, to make um, uh, land use more efficient. And one of the ways to make land use more efficient was to drain actually peatlands. Because in peatlands, not only carbon is stored, but many, many nutrients are stored. So these uh, areas, once drained, have been uh, quite suitable for agricultural use. So our grandfathers did drain those peatlands, which we now uh, try to become uh, wet again. Now we are in the lucky situation that we are uh, developed, that no one has to um, um, has to starve in Europe and now we have to uh, really do our job and restore the peatlands. Die Torfmoore müssen wieder sumpfig werden. Seit tausenden von Jahren spielen Torfmoore eine unglaublich wichtige Rolle bei der Regulierung unseres Klimas und übernehmen maßgebliche Ökosystemfunktionen. Heute obliegt es uns, möglichst viele Torfmoore wiederherzustellen, damit sich auch die uns nachfolgenden Generationen an diesem Naturerbe erfreuen können.